Hello, Druid. Hello, Druid. Chaser Red 2 calling. Are you receiving me? Over. Hello, Chaser Red 2. Druid Control answering. Receiving you loud and clear. Are you receiving me? Over. Hello, Druid. My engine is packing up. Request permission to land immediately. Over. Druid answering. Okay. Inflate. Inflate. Listening out. I really don't know whether it's worth it. As soon as I've repaired one shed, I have to start on another. Mm. Excuse me, Father. Cigarette? Oh, thanks. It's going to be a quiet holiday down here. Crashed. Come on. Don't need help. <laughs> There it is. It's over there. I'm that ditch. Be careful, miss. I'm all right. Shine it torch here, Helen. Anyone know how to get this damn thing open? I think you push it. No, it won't budge. Here, you try. Look, pull it, pull it. Now take it easy. There should be a catch or something of the sort. Oh, look, he's unconscious. There's blood. Don't worry, miss. We'll get him out in two shakes. If you push him, don't pull. Push, damn you, can't you see? Damn yourself. Oh, please don't <clears throat> quarrel. Isn't there a catch or something you pull out? I can't find one. Now, give me that axe. Here. Take care, don't hit the pilot. Leave it to me. My God, you may have killed him. Oh, father. Right. It slipped. I warned you. Well, we can get at him now. Wait, there's some kind of button here. I... You've sorted something, a plane's on fire. Back, for God's sake, quick, quick. Get back, me. Get back, I'll tell you. What should we do? What should we do? We can't leave it like this. We must try something. Too late now. There's nothing. Only we'd known how to get him out. If only we'd know. Double three wanted. Good shot, sir. Yes. If we'd only known how. Yes, that's true. Tough luck on that chap having no one around who knew. It's two months ago now, and I still can't go through a night without dreaming about it. That plane on fire and the... If only I hadn't used that axe. Oh, there was nothing wrong with using the axe. That was quite sensible. It was the way you used it. I suppose I was really to blame if I hadn't started pushing things about. Oh, neither was it your fault that you happened to find a button of some kind around and in the excitement pressed it. It was just unfortunate. You know, it's far better to leave any mechanism alone till you're quite certain what it is. It's worrying. It's terrible to think of another plane crashing round here while we... Couldn't you tell us how to set about a rescue in a proper way? Yes, I'd be very pleased to. I think I can give you a pretty good idea if you can spare the time. We can certainly do that. Well, suppose we start with the type that crashed on your farm. Let's see, a Spitfire, wasn't it? Yes. I'll try to give you the routine in the form of what one might term a drill. Suppose we imagine a demonstration on an undamaged plane. On arrival, the rescuer should take up a position on the port or left-hand side of the machine. Frequently, the hood covering the cockpit has just been thrown back by the pilot himself just before crashing. But if that has not been done, it is necessary to press the small button, which is on the pilot's side of the rear vision mirror. Then slide the hood back. This might need considerable force. By chance, however, the hood, through some misfortune, may have become jammed. It will then be necessary, by means of any handy instrument, to break a hole in the perspex, and this should be done through the forward top of the hood. It is worth remembering that the special type of glass, or perspex, as it is called, in use on planes, has, when broken, very ragged edges, capable of inflicting severe cuts. 
Always, therefore, when breaking in, make a fairly large hole, so that a hand and arm can be introduced without danger of injury. When the hole is made, push the hand through and pull firmly on the jettison release, which will be found at the front of the sliding hood. The entire hood can then be lifted free and thrown aside. This may also prove impossible, in which case entry must be forced. The small door on the side of the cockpit can then be opened by pushing down on the lever inside the door. Should it be found impossible to open the door, a small crowbar will be discovered attached to the inside. This can be used to prise the door open and can also be used effectively on any other obstruction which may be encountered. It is first necessary to release the pilot from his safety harness and then from his parachute harness. Taking the safety harness first of all, this consists of webbing approximately over the pilot's stomach. The release consists of a spring pin inserted through a hole in a projecting stud, which merely has to be withdrawn. The harness falls away. Then comes the parachute harness release. This takes the form of a disc, again approximately over the pilot's stomach, which must be rotated fully in a clockwise direction. It is then given a smart knock towards the pilot's body, which releases the harness and the straps fall away. The dinghy on which the pilot sits is attached by tape and dog lead clip to the pilot's May West. This will be found on the pilot's waist on his right hand side and must be detached. It is easy to see how the harness combined with the weight and bulk of the parachute and dinghy must seriously hinder rescue. Another way of attaching the dinghy to the pilot is by means of a spring clip. The spring barrel, not the lead itself, is shifted outwards. Next, remove the pilot's helmet and attachments. To do this, release simple press stud on lower right-hand side of pilot's helmet, thus releasing the chin strap, then lift off as carefully as possible in case of head or neck injuries. It is vital to see that the pilot's legs and feet are free. If not, the obstructing parts must be moved, and in such a way as to avoid injury to the pilot. It should then be possible to lift the pilot out of the cockpit, which can more easily be accomplished by straddling the fuselage and lifting him out, holding him under the armpits. If available, another helper should guide the legs and take the weight. The lifting should be done as gently as circumstances allow, Always presume injuries, should the pilot be unconscious and unable to advise on his own condition. If the aircraft is lying on its back... Oh, excuse me, eh? If the aircraft is lying on its back, endeavour to lift up the tail slowly. It is then necessary for someone to crawl underneath and open the cockpit hood, as described previously. Now, since the pilot is hanging in his safety harness upside down, very great care must be taken when pulling out the release pin so that he doesn't drop on his head. By the way, it's quite useless to try and lift this type of aircraft by one of the wings. When free of the cockpit, carry him to a safe distance from the plane. If no house or shelter is close to hand, lay him down and keep him as dry and warm as possible with coats or anything else that may be available. Then await the ambulance. Should there, however, be evidence of some more or less minor injuries, obviously requiring first aid, it is well worthwhile looking for the first aid box. This will be found by opening a small panel in the fuselage situated on the port or left-hand side and towards the rear. Well, that in brief is how to release the pilot from a Spitfire, and the general procedure holds good for all types of fighters. Of course, there are differences with other planes, particularly with regard to the method of entry. For instance, take this Typhoon. Approach should be made on the starboard or right-hand side of plane. If both the windows are closed, a door can be opened by means of a hand grip on the outside. If the window is down, 
the door latch can be released by means of a red lever, situated immediately above and behind the pilot's head. Once the door is open, the hood itself lifts up. If the doors are in some way jammed, the only means of ingress is to smash open a window. There are two small levers situated right and left of the cockpit, immediately forward of the doors. If these are pulled, both doors and roof can be lifted off in their entirety and thrown aside. Easy access to the pilot is thus obtained. Now again, let's consider this bow fighter. As you see, it is of a decidedly different type and carries a crew of two. The normal entry in this case is from below, but it is rare indeed for this to be accessible when the plane has crashed. In this case, the rescuer must go up on the starboard or right-hand side wing. A small red lever is well in evidence at the bottom of the window. There is no means of reaching this except by breaking the glass around it. The lever is pushed to release side panel. This done, a lever situated top center of the opposite or port side window is moved backwards, releasing the safety catch. Meanwhile, if there is more than one rescuer to hand, someone else should be attending to the observer. A hole must be broken in the observation dome, in the port or left hand side of the plane. At the edge of the fuselage are two small levers, one to the front and one to the rear. When these are pulled, the dome can be lifted on hinges. The observer must be released from his harness in the way already described. It may be that when the plane crashed, the observer was engaged on other duties somewhere forward in the body of the plane, in which case the rescuers must enter through the dome and search for him. So you see there are certain differences to be contended with depending on the type of aircraft that may have crashed. But to a great extent, and once the principles of rescue procedure are understood, a common sense and a cool head will get over most of the difficulties, such as finding a means of entry to the aircraft. Well, I hope I've made myself pretty clearly understood. Thanks, that'll help a lot. We shan't feel so useless another time. Do you think there's anything else you ought to tell us? Not tonight, he won't. It's after time now. Come along, gentlemen, please. Well, that's that. I hope these tips will be useful to you if you ever need them. We're very grateful for them. Come along now, please. Well, for the time being, cheerio. And please remember what I've told you. Then perhaps one day you'll save my life. You never know. <laughs>